Welcome to chapter five, chapter on sustainability in the supply chain, also talking about the design of goods and services. We'll talk about the product life cycle, which is something you would have taken in marketing. <coughs> We're also going to talk about the product development system, time phase competition, bit about how products and services are defined, and we will definitely talk about decision trees. So product life cycles, as you can see by the definition, may be very short from a few hours to decades long. In the case of certain items that you're familiar with, cars, the product life cycle is five years for cars and is three years for cell phones. Cell phones are usually made uh, for a period of time of three years. But what happens is new models come out, but they still sell the older models. So with the iPhone 12 coming out, the iPhone 11 will still be made, the iPhone 10 will be made, but the iPhone 8, will, Apple will discontinue making that product. So in this particular case, and as you are aware with your schooling, you are experiencing negative cash flow because uh, you're in the cost of development stage of the introduction and growth. After you graduate, you're going to start to see your revenue increase and your costs of going to school. So you'll have two things happen. Your revenue will increase because your paychecks will get bigger and your cost of development. So in other words, you won't be paying tuition anymore. So that is a positive. So same kind of thing with a product. They start generating more revenue because they're selling more and they're not spending all that money on research and development. So again, introductory phase, you're doing research, product development, etc., and modifying and enhancing things. The growth phase, product design begins to stabilize as you see. You start to be able to, to get better at uh, forecasting because there's more stability in the design and you're looking to add capacity because you're trying to ramp up your production. In the maturity stage, you start getting higher volumes, so also lower cost per unit, and it becomes about cost control and perhaps reducing the product line from you found what your best sellers are, so rather than making 10 versions of the same thing, you can reduce it to the best four or five to, again, create economies of scale. And then, of course, in the decline stage, you become it becomes very specialized and, again, perhaps uh, terminating the sale of the product. One of the most expensive days of your life so far has been the day you decided to go to school. You may not have spent any money that day, but you have committed yourself to go to school for your diploma or your degree. And then you started going to school, and that would be the cost incurred line. At the start, if one day you decided, oh, I'm going to go get a bachelor's degree in management, and then the next day you decided I'm going to get a bachelor's degree in environmental science, or I'm going to go and get a bachelor's degree in accounting, that was very easy to change. But now that you are partway through your program, it becomes more difficult. If you were to switch majors or concentrations, then it's becoming more expensive because some of your courses may not transfer well. There was a friend of mine who was in third year of university in commerce. He decided he just didn't like commerce. And so he left and he went back the following uh, September and he decided to get a bachelor degree in education. But his courses really didn't transfer over. So he was basically starting all over again. So his university was more expensive in the fact that he took part of the program and then he switched. So it became more, it was more expensive. And the cost of change when the e went up, but the ease of change went down. So again, Here's just a listing of how you can 
identify new product opportunities. I'm not going to go through and read that uh, you can quite capable of doing that yourself. Uh, identifying things like, uh, unfortunately, with the pandemic for COVID, there became opportunities for masks. Who thought there would be big demand for that and different types of masks? Technological change, uh, you know, introduction of Wi-Fi, uh, and and in 2020, the introduction of 5G networks for your cell phones. Uh, quality function deployment is just a technique that is used to identify customer wants, etc. Honestly, you can kind of uh, skip over this particular one. It's not uh, that particularly important for this chapter. Uh, manufacturing value added. So reducing environmental impact, standardizing the products, uh, improving job design and job safety, et cetera. And you'll see on the next screen, this is what they're talking about. You originally designed the product as number one, and then you found better and better ways to design the product that still serves the customer needs. And you went from costing $3.50 with assembly and materials to only costing 80 cents. So that is value added with a cost reduction and finding better way to assemble and perhaps lower amount of materials. An example, by the way, of that is years ago, Toyota, in one of the versions of the Toyota Camry, used to put three pieces of weather strip on the door. The purpose of the weather strip was to keep dirt and moisture out of the cabin of the vehicle and also to reduce noise. So they put three strips. That took time and effort to place all three strips on the frame of the door. All right, on the where the door closes. When Toyota redesigned the vehicle, they only put on one piece of weather stripping. Now, what that did though was that one piece was wider than the three pieces put together. So there was a little increase to, to material, but there was one, uh, only one uh, application from labor. So think of it this way. You have a pen, a fine tip pen, and you have to draw three lines. You draw one, two, three lines. Or you take a felt marker that's wider than the three individual lines, and you just draw one line. So that's way faster. It's a third of the time for labor. And it actually did a better job because the weather strip was actually wider so that they uh, it reduced more moisture and dirt and noise from getting into the cabin. And so it was value added. It was actually better, sort of win-win. Time-based competition, uh, you know, the technology area is very much based on this. Uh, new products coming out faster, give you a competitive advantage. And that's what people want. They want, they want a phone that has 5G. In September of 2020, Apple does not have a 5G phone, but it is expected by October of 2020, they will have a 5G phone. But I believe Samsung and LG and probably Huawei all have 5G phones. So here's just a, a diagram uh, that you can see that puts some of the previous concepts together in a graphic form. So Fairly straightforward, I would think. Internal development, external development, et cetera. And how you develop the product with joint ventures, alliances, or just do it internally. From one extreme, you do it all yourself, to you develop it with other companies. You develop the product with other companies. You need uh, this, how to assemble it. You have charts and drawings. You have a routing sheet, which is the process, work orders, and then engineering change notices, which are when you are going to make changes to the product. It doesn't always uh, stay the same. Service design, uh, interaction with the customer, obviously. You can customize it. You can personalize it by simply referring to the person by name. Uh, and uh, cost and quality are still determined in the design stage. 
Uh, you can delay the customization. You can treat things modular. So as one of the things that is can be done, for example, is with COVID and with the ability to record things like this lecture, that can speed things up, actually. So we can actually improve the uh the costs or reduce the cost because you only have to record it once. <coughs> Sorry. So for every time from now on, after the fall of 2020, that I teach chapter five, I've got the videos done. Could have done that in the past, but that's not the way it was it was done. You go into the class, talk about chapter five, sometimes three times in a week, I do the same thing. So we've kind of automated a little bit. And so I can now have this one recording and then it replaces having to do it uh, to the same length of time that I would for having to go in and repeat myself for three times a week. So when we have the live lectures, which I'm going to continue after uh, we get through this pandemic. So I will just spend five or 10 minutes typically on a particular chapter, not the length of this which is usually 20 to 30 minutes. Decision trees. Please watch the videos on the examples from chapter number five. The alternative is the square node. The round circles are the states of nature. You have to make a decision when it's an alternative, and you multiply the probabilities by the expected values to come up with a value for the uh, states of nature. So there'll be probabilities with the states of nature, which is the round circle. And then you have to choose between the top and the bottom node uh, to discern whether you should make it or buy it or whatever the case may be. So one of the p possibilities that you normally have in some cases is do nothing. Unless you're being forced to do, like say something for the environment, you must change the way that you uh, to dispose of your good of your waste and things along this line. And that's the end of chapter number five.